Welcome everyone to Thursday Yin. It's an absolute honor to be here and to continue our practice into level two territory, which is increasing the duration. So today we're really gonna be focusing on 10 minute holds. And when we focus on longer periods of time, we always have to remember that we need to accommodate we need to modify. So again, this is not something we should or could do, right? But again, the strong sensation, it's not that bad. It is that bad. As we increase the time, it is something that is essential to know as a yogi that this is your practice. And so being at the level two level, being able to endure longer and longer with gratitude is all about modifying and accommodating. If you're in the posture, and you feel that peace sweeping over you, that's you reaching that comfortable edge. And that's where we want to abide. Because then it's almost like there's the, there's the line of uncomfort or discomfort. And we're just gonna push ourselves right up to it, find it, and then I like to just back off a little bit. And then through the 10 minutes, slowly, 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 through those micro movements and through the breath, sort of, push that boundary just a little bit more forward. So that would be my suggestion. Again, do what feels right. And if it doesn't feel right, you can always sit and meditate, you can change the posture, or you can just do a little bit of movement because movement is medicine, help it relax, help it release, and then come back in. Over time, you'll be able to find the meditation throughout this. So let's begin. So we're gonna to start today lying down on our backs. And as we get on our backs, we're gonna cross our legs. And we're gonna do a 10 minute posture to warm us up today. So we're gonna do 10 minutes here in shoelace, but we're gonna do five and five. And we're gonna to progress towards a 10 minute per side uh, pigeon pose. So we're gonna do 10 minutes on right, 10 minutes left. But to warm up, we're gonna do five and five. So still 10 minutes, but we're gonna do five and five. So lying down on our backs, relax. You might wanna even bring a bolster behind your head just for your neck, right? So again, cross right over left and just bring those knees in towards each other, getting that deep, deep, deep stretch through the hip flexor, through the lumbar spine, through the thoracic, and just allow it to relax here. And again, just having that bolster pillow underneath your head really does help accommodate. And we're gonna breathe all the way in and all the way out. So again, just bringing everything in, you can pretty much grab hold of any part, right? As you reach down a little bit lower, right? That just makes it a little bit more difficult. But again, bringing those knees toward the chest and just allowing your upper body to relax and just feel that internal stretch as we warm up today through doing shoelace, you know, five minutes each side. And of course, once you reach your comfortable edge and it feels good, that's where we bring the breath in. breath can be long and deep at first, but then gradually over time can start to become more and more peaceful. So again, relaxing into the movement, right? breathing and being.
good at this point. If you'd like to make it even more challenging for yourself for the next five minutes, you can bring it right into eagle legs. Again, we started in shoelace, but if you wish to go a little bit deeper, you can now go to eagle legs. Perfect. So again, halfway through our five minutes, and again, just making that change. as we increase that internal rotation in the hips. And finding that long, deep breath until it starts to become more and more natural. So again, it's not that it gets shorter, it just becomes more natural. So the lips may close. We might start to feel you know, an ujjayi breath where you start to feel that smoldering through the throat. But again, that's more of a solar ujjayi. In the end, we want to practice more of a lunar ujjayi, a softer. Right? It's almost like you're relaxing, you're letting go with each breath, finding that state of surrender. Right? Surrender is when we combine all three sensations, stillness, silence and spaciousness and those are really you know the periphery of surrender right you can't have surrender with all those three things right so being able to find what is comfortable breathe through what is comfortable into the uncomfortable find that boundary back off right take two steps back to move three steps forward, right? So you're searching, you're seeking, but then the seeker becomes sought. And that's where you make the biggest differences here in this practice, right? It really is truly about letting go, letting be. Because the more you let go and let be, the more you can receive. Great, that was our five, let's switch it up, right? So again, just uncross, crisscross applesauce onto the other side, grab hold, start here, right? Start with that nice shoelace. No use going right for eagle legs. Again, it's just a warm up. We're gonna do a 10 minute, you know, asana through two parts. And our next posture is gonna be pigeon, but we're gonna do 10 minutes aside. So that's gonna take us 20 minutes to complete. And we'll do it in different phases. But again, this is a great warm up because again, you get to relax the spine down. Right? You get to have your neck supported. So again, everything is nice and chill on the back body. Again, we're getting that deep feeling in the hip, that really strong adduction, right? Moving toward the, the center line or the midline of the body, right? We're supercharging the Kundalini Right, this is Shashuma. This is that center. And Ida and Pingala, right? Crisscross applesauce through the chakras all the way down to the base of the spine. Right, as we breathe deeply, we're sending that energy. The prana goes in, even though the body's expanding, right? The diaphragm is expanding, the body's expanding, the actual energy is coming in through that expansion. So the air comes in through the body and down, but the actual body itself is expanding on the inhale. And then on the exhale, it's contracting, it's releasing, right? It's squeezing out. And this is a beautiful posture because we're really internally rotating, which I find very powerful for external rotation. And when we do pigeon, it's sort of a variation of the two. It is an external rotation, but there is an internal element to it because the back leg is straight. So this is a really nice way, almost as a, a counter to that. But again, it's gonna be a preparation. It's preemptive, right? It's not prescriptive. So many things we can do to prepare. Good, if you wish to go into eagle legs, now would be the time, right? Feel free to finish off the remainder of the five minutes here in eagle legs. Breathing all the way in with the earth. 
purpose for your now. Moving from automatic breathing, which is where we started, into deep breathing, long and peaceful. And then it becomes natural breathing, right? The breath, it's almost like the body is breathing. The mind doesn't need to think about pranayama, right? The mind is in a state of pranayama, right? It goes from automatic to natural. A natural breath is the best place to be. Because when the breath needs to be deep and long, it will be there. When the breath needs to be short and sweet, it will be there. Right? You're breathing through the whole body. And in yoga, we call these the vayus. And there's five vayus in the body. You know, five places in which we can breathe from. It's really about circulation, I find. Because as we increase respiration, we're increasing circulation. So these values respond to different areas of the body, from the periphery all the way to the core, right? And when I mean the core, I mean directly like, you know, the spine, right to that level. And there's different areas that it's broken down on according to the organs, basically your nervous system. Right? Because as we increase this circulation, we increase it two ways, through movement of breath, and movement of body, and movement of mind. Right? So as we increase the breath, right, we increase the circulation through respiration, and as we increase the circulation through movement, right, we do the same thing. We increase it through the micro-movement, and the micro movement increases the circulation. And if we do it with both, with respiration, we're always breathing, but if we're conscious of our breathing and we're conscious of our micro movements, I'm always pulling my knees inward toward my chest, just a steady pull. Again, it's not an aggressive pull, it's just very steady. If we can do this, right, we create the, you know, the permanent lasting change. Right at this point, I'm starting to feel this like burn. Perfect. Perfect way to warm up. Okay, spend two minutes relaxing and releasing. Again, we hold longer, we get longer time to counter stretch. The counter stretching is really important because again, it's back to that idea of what happens in the circulation. We start to increase circulation, right? Through the movement, not just of the body, with the breath. Right, I'm just choosing to do windshield wipers. You can basically do anything. Again, you can always look to me for just inspiration. That's it. But again, you might want to do something totally different. And that's okay. Right, feeling the healing. Letting it flow. Letting it go. And thirty more seconds. To really get in those last minute moments to break free of any fixation, right? any unhealthy pattern, right? bring life to it. Be awake to your waking. Be alive to your living. Good. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And one, beautiful. Let's roll over on to our left or right side, whichever we prefer, and come into a tabletop position. All right, so a couple options here with 10 Minute Pigeon. You can do this with a bolster. So I'm gonna show it with the bolster. I would suggest everyone start with the bolster, and then we'll work our way into releasing the bolster. But it is a really nice way to start because now you don't have any competition with yourself. You're not there to perform, right? We're here to play. And when we're having fun in it, as we move uh, through that stillness, that silence, that spaciousness, 
and we get to a state of surrender, which is what yin is, right? That feels very sweet. It feels very serendipitous. It's a very powerful experience. So again, the gentler we begin, right? The more we can take a gentle journey toward our destination, which is for me all about gratitude. All right, so let's try it out. All you're gonna have to do is step forward with the right leg, place the bolster underneath, and then you just kind of come down onto the knee and stretch the back leg. So basically the bolster is supporting you just where the hip is, right, just underneath your thigh. Perfect, so this is great. So we're gonna start like this, and if it gets too much, I'm gonna show you a modification, right? You're just gonna lean over onto your hip and come into deer pose. So basically now I'm just sitting down, right? And you can do everything we're about to do from here. So just be mindful of that. Okay, so pigeon stretching the leg back behind you, right? Getting into a good way. Good, hip centered, right? This foot, right, this leg, is literally at my hip. So this heel forms a perfect little pocket with your hip. So the heel and the hip come together, right? And that's how you know you got the right triangle, right? So again, it's just basically for meditation pose. Once again, we're going into like a half lotus here, but from this side. And if there's any discomfort in your knee, you can always press through the foot. Right, there's all sorts of things you can do. And again, like I said, if it gets too much, you just come into deer pose, shift the weight onto the right side. All right, let's begin. This is a wonderful experience. If this is your first time in 10 minute pigeon, get ready. It's quite powerful. So start nice and tall, shift your weight left and right. And again, at any point after this point, you can remove that bolster. But again, I would suggest not if this is your first time. 10 minutes is a long time. You might get a little ambitious. But when you hear the beep, 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 beep is when I'm gonna release. So I'm gonna do five minutes with the bolster, five minutes without. And I feel that's just right for my body. Because again, I'm not in competition, I'm not trying to perform, right? Again, this is for healing, this is for feeling, this is for surrender, so I can meditate and I can get into a better way. I can experience distortions in time. 10 minutes can go by like this if I'm comfortable. If I'm not comfortable, I'm gonna be in agony. I'm gonna feel every second as if it was a minute and every minute as if it was an hour. So be very mindful. This practice is very elusive, but there's a lot to learn within it. And again, we all have to learn through our own experience. And that's the beauty of the practice. You really truly are your own guru. So coming down onto the ground, relax, let everything go. You can stretch your arms up or just have your elbows out wide, whatever you prefer. And again, like I said, I'm going to spend the first five minutes here just with the bolster. And then when I hear the clock, the timer, I'm going to remove the bolster. And then I'm just going to make little adjustments, go a little bit deeper. But in the meantime, what I should be focusing on is the breath. So I'm going to cue the breathing. And that way it will give you that oceanic experience of the wave rising and falling, just like the breath rises and falls. And remember, like love, like the breath, it comes, goes, but never leaves. We're always breathing. So the awareness is what never leaves. And that's what we want to increase in our practice.
Well, that was the alarm I was talking about. Just lift your hips a little bit and relax that bolster out to the side. Again, stretch a little bit longer. I'm going to take the next five minutes without the bolster. Actually, I'm going to place it under my knee. I'm finding my knee is getting a little bit of rug burn. But again, you might not have that problem if you're using a rubber mat. Maybe that first five minutes was long. Maybe it was short. See if you can deepen your practice by deepening your breath. And that is what will naturally deepen you in the posture. that breath. The longer you hold, the harder it becomes. Not because you're doing anything different. It's just you're getting past the muscle, into the connective tissue, into the ligaments, into the tendons. Right? There's very little flexibility in ligaments and tendons, but there is some flexibility. And in order to get there, you have to hold for longer and longer. And so this stillness is a requirement. This spaciousness is a requirement. This silence is a requirement. Combine all three, you have surrender. If you want to teach surrender, that's one of the ways. You teach it not by its opposite, not by will. Because right? there's still an element of will and surrender. But that is what surrender is. It's the surrender of will. Right? You choose to let it go. You choose to fly the white flag. You choose to give in. You don't give up. You're not conquered. Right? You're surrendered. And you're going with the flow. And you're not resisting the flow. The more you can breathe through it, the more you're going to receive through it.
Beautiful, that was 10 minutes on one side. So again, take a whole two minutes. I like to come up and just move side to side. That's just me, right? You do you. That means push back child's pose, cat cow. I just like to hold a little bit longer and really get that sensation, that stretch moving through. See, for me, that was really short because again, I surrendered. You know, rather than just talk through the whole thing, right? a lot of teachings have been given. It's important to have those temporal jumps or those temporal shifts. Of course, temporal, I'm referring to time. Right? It's really important to feel the shift of time. Right? Just like with sleep. It's like, oh, how long was that? Right? That's where you want to be. You want to feel that the in practice just kind of goes on by very gracefully. And we've all been to classes where oof, the seconds become minutes, the minutes become hours. Okay, don't let this class be that class. Right? Really take your time, really enjoy. Go into, you know, uh, what's it called? Deer pose, you know? You do the whole thing with the bolster. Right? There's so many ways we can experience the yin. But if we're searching for performance, right, that's something else. There are better practices that can give you, you know, more flexibility. This is about being flexible in the mind as much as it is the body. This is about being stable in your mind as much as it is being in your body. And that's why we keep emphasizing that all health is mental health. <coughs> in yoga, it's not a question, but a practice as the answer, right? The mind and body are one. It's not a question, right? It's a practice as an answer. Beautiful. When you're ready, we're going to go on to the other side. So again, I'm just going to take it the way I originally did. So place the bolster in the middle. You just come up, take a step over top of the bolster. And now you'll really get to see it. And again, all I'm going to do is slide that heel toward that hip. So it looks like this. I just come forward. And as I come forward, you know, very safely, just coming, and now I'm gonna imagine that that heel and hip are coming toward each other. And that's perfect. Right, back leg is nice and extended, no curling of toes, right? You can press through the back leg to lift the knee, but again, coming into a good way. And then again, dropping the weight down. So, as I said before, that heel and that hip are lined up, right? So that's what makes the safe triangle. And then again, I'm gonna take this once again, five minutes on the bolster, five minutes without the bolster. You can stay on the bolster the whole time. Remember, you can come into deer pose. See, you just shift over and continue. Less weight, less pressure, right? Less loading on the hip. All right, but wherever you are, let's find a comfortable position and then lying down on the floor, relax. Elbows out, arms straight, whichever you prefer.
beautiful. That's the five minute marker. If you're like me, you'll remove the bolster now. I'm gonna place it underneath my knee. That's where I like to put it. And again, just being on a carpet, there is a little subtle rug burn as I stretch out slowly, slowly. So again, that just helps with that. Again, staying with the bolster, dropping into deer pose, lots of different options. But again, that heel and hip are coming together. And that's what that weight is all about. So you distribute the weight, really feel that connection. And that will deepen that stretch of the hip. Taking that gentle journey and surrendering, letting the body find that stillness, find that spaciousness, find that silence, and increment by increment, breath by breath, moving into it, slowly, gently. your jaw, scan your body, and make sure there's no tension. And any tension that gets brought by the body, your work is to mediate that tension. Be aware of it. Help it to relax, help it to release, help it to let go.
circle. That was 10 minutes, slowly, slowly making your way up. Again, spending a whole two minutes doing whatever it is you would like to do. Again, I just like to rock and roll. And I really establish that permanent lasting change. Oh, I can feel that beautiful calm coming over the body, right? It's amazing to think that just doing those two postures took 20 minutes. That's the joy. It really is the reward, right? The effort is the reward. And in the end, it's really effortless. And do less, be more. Right? The less you do, the more you're going to be able to be and receive. slowly slowly coming out Ooh -wee. that feels good deep 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 in the hip crease so that's not what we're going to end today we're going to do one more posture we're going to do straight leg forward fold because again it's just wonderful to do absolutely love it and then it's going to be option for shavasana or for sitting meditation. And again, you can extend this practice right into your own practice, meaning you can take the time and just take the end of class as a suggestion. As I've mentioned many times before, the end of the yoga practice is the beginning of the meditation experience. So when we leave behind the practice, right, that's when we get into the experience. So it's a lot like musicians, right? They're, they're practicing and then they get into the flow, right? That's the meditation, right? That's where time disappears, technique disappears, and sort of, you know, this emotional range of chemicals start to become more consistent, more prevalent. And that's what we call consciousness, that we're just abiding in the self, in the consciousness, in the natural resting state without oscillations of the mind. And of course, what happens in the mind happens in the body. So finding that forward fold, I've already started the time. Relax your head. So I'm gonna just demonstrate from the side, a little bit easier to see. So legs straight. Again, you can just hold on to your ankles. You don't have to curl your toes, relax your legs. But I really like to pull. And as I drop my elbows, I drop my head, legs stay straight. Again, feet can come together or apart. Again, it just depends on how you want to take your forward fold. So again, relaxing into it. But again, first things first. Make sure the legs are straight. Then you reach towards the toes. You don't have to grab the toes. You grab outside the feet. All right. And then, of course, with your arms straight, you start to bend your elbows. That brings you a little bit deeper. And of course, you're unlocking through the lower back. And then with each breath, right, focus on bringing that belly button to the back of the spine or like an ice cream scoop up towards the heart from underneath the rib cage. And if you do this, you'll be in a nice, beautiful, you know, meditation 
while in the posture. Again, feeling all the sensations from the last posture, right, as a residual into this posture. And that's the reality. Each posture begets the other. Right? We take two steps back to move three steps forward. So really feeling that pigeon pose in the forward fold. Again, very unique, very special. Halfway there, doing great.
Beautiful. And that was our 10 minutes. Slowly, slowly coming up. And again, take all the time you need. Windshield wiper the knee side to side. Let it go, let it flow. And then when you're ready, take all the time you need. Just meet me in a comfortable seated position. And once there, you're going to bring the hands together and all that good energy flowing and going through the palms. All right, bring it up over your head, back down over your heart. And remember, the end of this practice is really the beginning of your meditation experience. So spend the time, you know, once we you know, close the practice, right, to open the experience. Right, because this is what yoga is all about, to prime the body, right? to ready the mind. Because the soul, the spirit is always there, it's always abiding. Right? And the mathematics of infinity, you know, the circumference, the circumference is everywhere and it is nowhere. And that's what that painting behind me represents. Right? The ohm at the center of it all. And the mathematics of infinity, the circumference or the circle is everywhere and yet it is nowhere. That is what it is to be infinite. Let's move really fast now, super, super fast. For 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Open it up. Let it go. Let it flow. Feel, feel, feel. Abide in the spaciousness. Abide in the stillness. Abide in the silence. Let's chant one mantra om or brahmari to close our palms, close our practice. Deep breath in. Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. And your thoughts, your hearts, and everything that you see are and be. The divine in me sees and shares the divine in you. In love, with love, through love. Thank you everyone for coming out today and stretching the mind as much as we stretch the body. Namaste. Hey. So as I said before, you can take this time just to sit in meditation and enjoy. It's an absolute honor to lead your practice today.